Elon Musk just said something really bullish about Tesla stock. The Ford Lightning is a good vehicle, just somewhat expensive, especially given the high interest rates these days for any kind of loan. Elon Musk said that right after this news came out, Ford has lowered the price of their F-150 Lightning by up to $10,000. The electric truck now starts at $50,000, basically, instead of $60,000. Ford also reduced the price of their top trim, but not by as much as their base trim. This is huge news because there have been a lot of fears that perhaps the Cybertruck is going to cost a lot more than expected. This whole time really Elon has been saying that the Cybertruck is going to be more expensive but this is the first big hint at the opposite that it is actually going to be cheaper than perhaps expected at this point. Although don't confuse cheaper with cheap it will not be a cheap vehicle it'll still be pretty pricey i think however my guess is that if you compare f-150 lightning new prices this will not feel cheaper than what you will be getting from the cybertruck it's also a possibility that elon musk is referring to the pricing of cybertruck in the long term not necessarily in the short term and perhaps Elon was not really referring to anything, although I would find that really surprising. I think this means that the pricing of a Cybertruck is going to be pretty good in the long term. James is feeling really bullish. He says that Tesla's announcement of the Cybertruck's pricing and specs will break the internet. This is of course terrible news for Ford because F-150 Lightning needs to be cheaper than the Cybertruck to survive and thrive at the same time. Wall Street Journal is reporting that EV sales grew about 50% in the first half of 2023, but Ford's EV sales only grew 12%? That does not sound good at all. Remember this from July 6, Ford Insider here, dealers are refusing the Mach-E allocation in big numbers, e-transit is completely dead, and Lightning buyers are not picking up their reservations. And now we are seeing the effects of that much lower prices. 17% lower, in fact, for the base trim. And we also have to remember that Ford is already losing money on the F-150. Just now, they will be losing a lot more money. And now let's go through the rest of today's Tesla stock news. This is bullish and a bit bearish at the same time, but I would say more bullish, at least in the short term, than bearish. Tesla's directors agreed to settle a shareholder lawsuit challenging their compensation by returning to the company the value of 3.1 million stock options worth $735 million, according to a Monday filing in a Delaware court. This would be a little bit like doing a buyback of $735 million. Not quite exactly like that, but these shares will never see the market anymore. The reason why I say this is a bit bearish at the same time is because who are these directors and what will that do to their motivation to work hard and focus on Tesla and not think about leaving Tesla and going someplace else. The settlement resolves a 2020 lawsuit by a retirement fund which holds Tesla stock and challenge stock options that were granted to Tesla directors starting in June 2017. It appears that this has nothing to do with Elon Musk's compensation. Sam from ARK Invest says, I think it's a good sign for demand when a vehicle that's not for sale surpasses surgery demand for one of the best-selling cars in the world. He's comparing the Model Y search volume in red versus the Cybertruck here in blue. Sam also says Tesla makes one production Cybertruck and Ford cuts prices by $10,000. Sam could also be a comedian if he wanted to switch careers, I think. However, Ford insists that a recent plant upgrade enables them to lower all of these prices. They say that this plant upgrade allows them to now produce an output, an annual output of 150,000 electric pickups beginning this fall, and that also improved battery material costs contribute significantly to the lower prices. What was the initial reaction from Ford investors this morning? Well, it was not positive. Ford was down 4.1%, but maybe after reading what Ford said here and investigating a little bit further, maybe the situation has now changed. And indeed, the situation has changed. Surprisingly, the stock now is down 5.47%. <laughs> 
clearly investors disagree. The big problem that Ford is facing here is that with every single F-150 Lightning EV sale, which loses a lot of money still, they also lose a sale of a gas-powered F-150, which is still wildly profitable. It's a double whammy that Ford is facing. Tesla released a new video that is wine being poured on a wide seat and you would think there's no way this is just going to come out without leaving permanent stains but look at all this do you see any red remaining here I don't although in that video I do see my regret of not getting the white seats however white seats do get jean stains but I don't wear jeans we have fairly good news regarding Tesla's earnings uh, everyone is above the street consensus i'm talking about uh, retail tesla stock investors we are still missing rob and troy but this right here is really interesting honey jam is projecting 95 cents in earnings uh, the street consensus is only at 81 cents now looking at troy's chart right here you can see uh, who has the best track record and Troy is number one but number two is Honey Jam. The most important part is if you look at the last two quarters Q4 and Q1 he has been really precise with his estimates and he is predicting a huge beat. Troy says that based on his calculation Tesla's order backlog is now basically 49,000 units down from 75,000 units at the end of May. There's a bit of a backlog for the Giga Texas made Model Y standard range which is equal to 32 days and then there is a backlog for Model S and X in China and then there's a bit of a backlog in the rest of the world for most of Tesla's vehicles. The rest of the world excludes the US, Europe and China, as well as Canada. Germany's top union today called for Tesla to improve staffing conditions at its German Gigafactory as it prepares to expand, with the carmaker due to publish its expansion plans for feedback from the community later this week. I don't see anything concerning in that report, although I found something that sounds concerning and actually sounds pretty good to me. Uh, Schultz said that in June alone, around 200 permanent staff had been laid off or signed payout deals in Giga Berlin, and a mid-triple-digit number of temporary workers had been let go. Sounds really bad, right? Without reducing the site's weekly production goal of 5,000 cars currently. The union is mad at Tesla for being more efficient. So what at first might have appeared like maybe a tiny little bit concerning turns out to be actually bullish. By the way, after Tesla implements its plan to double the size of its Giga Berlin factory, it is likely going to become the largest auto manufacturing facility in all of Germany. Tesla bears will run with this story completely misinterpreting what is actually happening. Tesla sued an Australian company, CapXX, in Texas federal court on Friday claiming its supercapacitors used for storing energy in electric vehicle batteries infringed two US patents owned by a Tesla subsidiary. This was reported by Reuters. We Tesla stock investors are well aware that Elon pledged in 2014 not to initiate patent lawsuits against anyone who, in good faith, wants to use our technology. That in good faith part is really important. What appears to be happening here is that Tesla is essentially countersuing in a lawsuit in which their subsidiary got sued. This is defensive, this is not offensive. And uh, he says that he's a patent attorney with 33 years of practice. It is also crucial to understand that anyone using Tesla's patented technology cannot sue Tesla for patent infringement. And Electric explains that Tesla says that the legal action is in response to CapXX having filed a patent infringement claim against Tesla's Maxwell back in 2019. Tesla today has made a new Twitter account just for North America specifically. The Tesla economist says Tesla stock increases over 40% of Ford's market cap from one Cybertruck being produced. What do you think is going to happen when Tesla actually <laughs> starts producing Cybertrucks? Bad things, perhaps a lot of bad things are going to happen to Ford.
We have heard about this before, but now we have an official letter making this request. Uh, Senator Warren is requesting the SEC to investigate Elon Musk's Tesla over Twitter ties, alleging misappropriating assets and conflicts of interest. I wonder how many Tesla uh, shares she owns. This is the same senator that said that Elon Musk is a freeloader. Can you believe that? Elon Musk being a freeloader? Elon Musk replied to her by saying, please don't call the manager of me, Senator Karen. Senator Elizabeth Warren sending a letter to the SEC highlighting the Tesla board's apparent lack of independence from Musk. Let's bring in CNBC.com's Laura Kolodny here to discuss. Laura, how serious are these allegations? This is really serious. Uh, Senator Warren sits on the most powerful committee that oversees the SEC. And you don't usually hear a senator calling out an individual company by name and seeking an investigation by a federal agency. So these are these are serious allegations and it's it's an unusual request. That said, would it be weird if I said if it's coming from Warren Grain of Salt? You know what I mean? Like, does it have this <laughs> sense of, of a political or ideological battle to it that you think could help uh, Tesla or Twitter defend them or, or Musk defend himself? Absolutely, yes, because you don't call someone a freeloader if they pay the largest federal tax bill in history. This is all politics. Because also, think about this. Where was she back in November and December? And early January, when these concerns were actually really legitimate. But now, all of a sudden, um, six months later, seven months later, perhaps, after these issues were really surfacing, only now she's supposedly taking action, which is, by the way, seven months closer to the election. It's funny, this, uh, this isn't particularly striking me as political because it's very wonky. It's about the... Tesla board of directors and whether they've given shareholders all the information they really need to understand how Tesla lent employees to Twitter, how that all worked out, what kind of costs it may have, you know, incurred to Tesla and so on and so forth. It's uh, I, I understand the point, but I don't I don't know. I don't know if this is just political, although they have taken jabs at each other through the years. As a Tesla stock investor, I welcome collaboration between Elon Musk's companies, including Tesla and Twitter, because think about this. Uh, one of the former executives of Tesla, who is now a GM board member, he said that collaboration between Tesla and SpaceX was crucial for developing a new alloy that was used for giga castings. Without that, it probably would not have happened. And sure, Twitter benefited to a certain extent, certainly from having some talent over uh, from Tesla, but I don't see that as a bad thing. It allowed Elon to move on from Twitter faster and find the CEO for Twitter a little bit faster. What is she alleging he has actually done? Well, she referred to actually CNBC reporting uh, in which we learned from Twitter and Tesla employees that Elon Musk borrowed effectively, you know, trusted inner circle Tesla employees to help him with the Twitter takeover. She's saying the board has not been transparent about this. And she's also talking through, you know, not just the disclosures, but also a question of why should, you know, Tesla resources be available to Twitter? These are ostensibly very different industries, right? Social media mm -hmm. and automotive. If you read through that letter, it will quickly become apparent to you that this is mostly political, even though there are some valid points. But check this out. Mr. Musk appears to be distracted or overly focused on other ventures, and the board's meager oversight over his behavior is jeopardizing Tesla's long-term value. And Mr. Musk exercises significant control over the day-to-day -day management of the company so is he distracted or is he focused on tesla laura i was also struck by the report just the other day that they were looking into musk's use of i think company funds or something to, what was with the glass house what was the case there <laughs> that was a really interesting story that uh wasn't related to twitter per se right. uh, but basically there Late last year, one of his higher ups, you know, sort of uh, chief of staff type, moved from Tesla over to SpaceX after there was a probe into the way and in, in which glass was ordered uh, for the Tesla Gigafactory in Texas, right? Their newest U.S. vehicle assembly plant, this huge operation. And then new details emerged in the Wall Street Journal about a week or two ago that said that Elon Musk had 
his people buying glass for what could ostensibly be like the just this crazy almost apple cube-esque structure <laughs> that may have been for personal purposes. So there were internal audits reported and yeah. uh, that's you know, she's got questions about that. She's referenced all that, and uh, she wants to understand, right, she wants the board to be transparent, and she wants to make sure that the board is making, making sure to keep Elon Musk in check. Uh, mm -hmm. They tend to be very deferential and supportive of his vision, but also are they doing the job on behalf of the company and shareholders when they might need to, you know, clash with and, and rein him in? I would be interested to hear what Ross Gerber has to say about this. Uh, he was not happy about the Tesla board earlier, although now he seems pretty happy. So I don't think even he thinks at this moment that Tesla board somehow needs to do better or rein Elon in. Reining Elon in could result in Elon stepping down as the CEO of Tesla and just him staying at Tesla to design new products. I would hate that outcome. I don't want that. I would rather have Elon focusing on Tesla and spending, let's say, a third of his time at Tesla instead of someone spending 100% of their time on Tesla but not being nowhere near as good as Elon. And YouTube says you should watch this video next, but if you haven't finished watching this Elon Musk interview, finish watching this one first. My name is Matt Postius. Like and subscribe if you haven't yet, and I'll see you in the next video. Thank you so much for watching.